Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in on you. Uh, it's been a long day at the office. Um, leaving now, uh, heading uh, to actually make a couple of stops before I uh, actually get home. And I wanted to stop by and talk to you about something that is on my mind and is a consistent passion of mine it's what I do actually so it's um, definitely something that's on my mind look uh, before I do that uh, show some little support uh, for the work we do at the Odyssey Project the way to do that is through the link uh, in the description box or by giving directly through the organization's cash app account which is also listed in the description box now a friend of mine just shared uh, a very sad uh, post with me about a young lady on social media uh, who, through her post, you could tell she was struggling with depression. Um, she was really trying to find ways to fight through it. You can see all of the signs uh, of her trying to see a brighter side, trying to rescue herself from the darkness, all the things that happen when people are really struggling and fighting uh, clinical depression uh, on a level in which they probably should have some professional intervention. Uh, first of all, it's, it's, it's important to understand that everybody goes through depression over the course of their life. You know, you have temporary bouts. You know, a week here, two weeks there, it's not necessarily something to be alarmed about. But when it stretches out months and further, that's definitely something there. And the extent to it, in which it does, you can become lethargic, you can become, you can become on purpose. You can find it difficult to get out of bed, find it difficult to do the things in life that you absolutely have to do. Uh, you wanna just sink back into a space. Now, this young lady had at least four kids I saw in the picture. Uh, and I, I, uh, there may be as many as five. And she would say, this is why I do it. You know, she's telling you, this is why I fight. Uh, from what I can understand, she wasn't getting any uh, help or support from their father. So it was just her out there struggling. Uh, and, and, and I don't want to point an arrow in any one direction because I haven't spoken to or been around or been exposed to anything except for what I decided to look at that was readily available when this was sent to me because I wanted to get an understanding of what happened. How did we get to the point to where she took her life? Um, and what I found in looking at the uh, comments on posts leading up to the situation, all the way to the point where she literally tells people on social media she's checking out. Um, and nothing anybody can do because nobody probably knows where she at and nobody can probably get to her in time, but she literally takes her own life. Um, there's a lot of people angry at her, a lot of people saying it's selfish. A lot of things that are normal uh, emotions and feelings when someone does that. Uh, I know that in instances that I've seen where it's been uh, a reality in my circle, you know, there are times I felt like, man, it's like the most selfish thing in the world. But from a professional perspective, the way that a person that is dealing with that is thinking isn't, we have to be very careful when we assess people. And I use the word assess uh, as opposed to judge because I think that we do need to assess people. I don't believe in judging people, but I do believe in assessing people to find out where they are, to see if they're real, to see you know where they are and, 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 and a bunch of other things. But when we assess people, we've got to be very careful that we're not assessing their behavior through the lens, through our lens in, in which we see the world uh, without giving any consideration to the lens through which they're seeing it. And it's important because they're not making their choices based on our mindset, our state of being, how we view things. They're making their decisions based on something completely different. And the when you where you're at in depression, 
the prefrontal cortex isn't fully functioning and operating the way you think. Nobody rationally takes their life. And there is something going on at a moment that is interrupting um, the executive function of the brain that would be able to reason and rational. This is not a good decision. This is not a good decision because you're leaving your children behind without knowing who they will be left with. And one of the things she does is she says in her post, if I'm successful at this, don't allow my children's father to, to have them. Well, first and foremost, nobody can control that. Uh, that's going to be between whoever in her family wants them and him if he decides to take them. Uh, her reasoning was he didn't do anything for them while she was alive. So he doesn't want, she doesn't want him to come out and assume the role. So obviously there's some issue with him that she does not have completely settled outside of just the fact that he, if he isn't doing anything for the kids, that's horrible in and of itself. That's something that needs to be dealt with and confronted within the community on a, on a pretty large level. Uh, but there's probably some other things going on and there goes a lot of what's there and it, it can travel back so far that we can't even speculate and I'm not going to, I'm just going to sit up and say uh, that she has definitely has an issue with him and I think it stands beyond the fact that he hasn't been supportive with the kids. That's enough though. If you're out there trying to raise a kid by yourself, not having the other parents help, male or female, is no easy challenge. I was a single father, I know, and I had the means, so money wasn't an issue. It still requires two people if you're gonna do it right. You Because no matter how much money you have, if you gotta go out and do what you do, you gotta have somebody you trust with your children. You gotta have somebody you trust with your children and you can find a place and you can think it's all good and I was fortunate in that era that nothing ever happened to my kids, but I know people who it did. So it's crazy with that. But what I wanna get at is I want to be very, very clear in conveying this message. Um, everybody that's out there that's pouring their heart out on social media is not attention whoring. There are some people out there that are literally crying out for help, hoping someone will throw them a lifeline, not really knowing where to go to help deal with what they're going through. And a lot of times we automatically assume because there's so much attention whoring on social media that people are just looking for attention. Uh, that's not always the case. And unless you have a very keen eye for this, it's gonna be difficult to tell which one. Sometimes it just, some people, you got single mothers that are struggling and suffering with uh, being alone, feeling abandoned, trying to rear kids on their own, trying to do it with minimum uh, to no little to no resources. You got men out there uh, trying to be fathers at a distance. Men out there trying to be husbands in a very challenging world and not having the space to sit up and say when they need help because the very nature of them needing help reduces them in, in, in the eyes of so many people in society. There's so much that that's weighing on people and everybody can't talk themselves off the ledge. You know, uh, I thank God that I've never put myself in a situation where I've been on a ledge in, in, in considering taking my life. And I've been in some real horrible places uh, over the course of my life. The vast majority of my life has been unbelievable. But there have been some moments where I looked up and went, how have I gotten here? What went wrong? Part of it, I'm blaming myself. Other part is go, how did I let that person get close to me? What was I thinking? And all of the guilt and all of that comes in along with the reality of where you're at. And now you've got to figure your way out of it. I've been there. I've been there at the lowest point of life. But I've never considered killing myself. And, and I, I don't want to be arrogant and, uh, and, and think it's because of some inherent strength in me. I think that a part of it is that I've been so wired my whole life not to quit. That quitting never ever becomes an option for me. And it gets rough even in today's society, not just in the sense of whether I want to live or not, but just whether, I, do I want to keep doing X, Y, Z? 
because this is happening, because that happened. I'm tired. Oh, I have that damn near on a weekly basis. Well, I'm just tired because of crazy crap that's going on, but I'm not wired to quit. So that has pushed me, but there was just some times that I've been on the edge in other ways. Now that's been a bunch I've been on edge where I want to go touch somebody. I want to do something to somebody. And fortunately, I did have someone to talk about that. I mean, I am not beyond seeking help. I have someone I go to on a, well, I have two people I go to on a regular basis that provide me with counsel, provide me with sort, provide me with accountability, that can uh, anchor me and make sure that I'm okay. And I do this for a living. Nobody is exempt from depression. Nobody is exempt from mental breakdown, mental psychosis, and it's important for us to understand that we keep carrying weight, we keep internalizing, we keep thinking we don't need it. If we don't deal with this stigma surrounding mental health and mental illness in our community, we're gonna consistently see something that I talked about on the Sunrise Project uh, last Sunday, and that is a rise in suicide ideation, suicide attempts, and suicides among young black men, teenage black men, and young children between the age of five and 11. Blacks, we are now becoming a significant statistic in a statistic that for a very long time, we were almost invisible in. Now we are becoming a prevalent part of that discussion because our mental health is under constant assault uh, with the way things are set up. Now everything is moving 100 miles an hour. We are now engaging one another in a way and at a volume we never did. We have access to thousands of people every day we wake up, pick up the phone. And people that we never met before are coming at us, saying things, doing things. We're looking at people on these devices and determining who's classy, who's beautiful, who's successful, and all of these different things. And we're gauging and measuring our lives uh, and where we're at based off of these assumptions about these people we don't even know. That's just the half of it. But what I can tell you is we've got to start minding um, mining, excuse me, our mental health. We've got to start measuring and and, and being aware of and, and, and being in tune with how we feel, uh, where our thoughts are going. And that's the side of it, of the self-responsibility on the other side of it. We've got to be careful about how we handle people. Because you never know what someone is. You never know what someone's going through. We love to talk about things after they happen. We love to look at it from a viewpoint of uh, being able to view it in hindsight and discuss it without ever truly giving any real consideration to what led to it. We love to, uh, you know, uh, like I said, attack from hindsight and I think it's extremely unfair I think it's something that we need to be aware of I think very much so it's important that we start to really behave like a community I think that we need to see someone in need and take action I'm going to pray for you it's not taking action I'm keeping you lifted it's not taking action Hey, what's going on? Let's sit down. Let's talk about. It. Hey, do you need me to do this? Hey, let's let's sit down. I mean, nothing else but. Hey, drop a kind word based off of what you hear. Never mitigate or or marginalize someone's feelings. Remember, perception is reality. It's not the facts. It's how I perceive the facts that create my reality. And based on the reality that is created by that perception, my response will come from that. My reaction will come from that. The same thing that will send one person into a complete spiral won't even phase the next person. And it's perception. It's place. 
your self-confidence. It's a bunch of things. But what you have to understand is the person that's going through it isn't going through it from your platform, from your position, from your perspective. There has to be a level of empathy that looks into a person's life and says, I can't really see everything, but I know you're going through something and let me see what I can do about it. Now, again, not everybody can be helped. Not everybody wants help. And there are attention whores out there who want nothing more than just to have everybody draped down into their bull crap and their dysfunction. And that is the reality. And so you definitely have to be aware of those people. So I just wanted to touch on that because it really, I mean, this, 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 this young lady may have been 30. And that is a very, 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 uh, I mean, stretched, maybe, because she's probably 27. Just looking at her, I mean, and that could be wrong. But none of the kids were that old. Uh, and, you know, I mean, even if she's in her 30s, she's still extremely young. She's she's taking her life. And, you know, and, 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 and for the people who want to judge that, if you've never been pent down in depression, you don't even have the right to speak on it. If you've never been dominated by depression, you don't have a right to speak on it. Uh, it's something I had to teach myself. I used to get real frustrated. Like, what, what were they thinking? They weren't thinking like I'm thinking. I know that. So that's the first thing. Then you have to ask yourself, what got them to that point? How many times did they reach out for help and didn't get it? How helpless and hopeless did they have to feel to feel like this was the only solution? Those are some of the questions that should be asked before judging somebody. Look, on that note, look, I'm gonna get out here and get ready uh, to make this first stop before I head home. But I had to talk about that, look. Uh, we've gotta do a better job of being a community. Uh, if we really learn how to be a community, a lot of the things we suffer from and struggle with wouldn't be an issue. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable evening.